Work, 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 work. Okay. Well, I'll get, will you will you calm down? I'm Maybe good as last night. Oh good. man, I didn't sleep. Uh, you're gonna have to calm down. No, 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 you're, no. You're, no, you're, calm you're down. actually gonna have to calm you down. You know me. Because we. We might have a treat. We might be picking up someone. Play. Just yeah, maybe, maybe. So just calm down a little bit, please. It's James Haskell, aka the Haskellator. Pull over, pull over. You better let the athlete in the front. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I know my place. Dude. Right, get yourself. T boys in the back, is it? In the front. <laughs> Oh my God, I've been driven around by Sir Brian O'Driscoll. James Haskell, it's an absolute pleasure. How are you, sir? It's a pleasure. How are we? Buckle up there, please, oh, folks. Yeah. We're in, first. we're in. Cool, we have some fun, don't we, lads? Oh, hey? here we yeah, go. It's just non-stop. Okay. Everyone comfy? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you obviously have played out in New Zealand, uh, so you have a fair understanding of the mentality of the players and, and the brand that's expected out here. What's it been like taking New Zealand on in, in their own backyard as a lion? It's been tough um, just because Everybody over here lives and breathes rugby. You know, it's like it's like no other place you go and play rugby in the world because you know you, you're combined with other sports. Rugby is the number one sport here. Everybody wants to be an All Black. Everyone's wishing you good luck, but it's always good luck. You're going to need it. That's the best bit. You kind of get a bit of chat from fans, and you almost have to kind of point them out, going, "You're not playing. You didn't. You are, you don't play for the All Blacks. You, you know, you haven't won anything. Your team has won something." Yeah, but it's also fantastic because you do have that excitement and popularity, and because. The Lions is so special. We've invaded New Zealand. You know, in the, in the early stages, there was like the die-hard fans who'd come out to watch the early games. But as days have gone by, it's got more and more intense. There's more and more red shirts everywhere. So you kind of feel like you've got people on your side. So one of the real treats and takeaways from touring with um, with the Lions is that you learn from so many great players and and what they do as individuals, but in their clubs and in their countries. What are your takeaways? There's obviously always little nuggets and bits and stuff you see with the way people do technical aspects of the game, where they, where they approach the breakdown or tackle technique or just having a conversation with guys about things. Well, the takeaways for me are going to be friends from this tour for, for a long time. You know, I, I mean, I've invited myself to Ireland, five <laughs> different households. Um, you know, I'm going to make up, a, I'll probably make up a trip to Scotland to see Greg Laidlaw and maybe Tommy Seymour. I might venture up there. I've just kind of tried to to take some friends home more than anything else. You know, I spent a lot of time with Joe Marler and, and, and Dan Cole, uh, the, you know, an unlikely duo. Like Johnny, I've got like a house on fire. Same with Dan Bigger. You know, there's a lot of characters like Carl Sinclair's turned into an absolute monster. Like, when Cruiser got inducted into our ranks, he was nicknamed the Turnip. Right, um, because his bottom is so big. Yeah, and also his nose. Does this actually suggest that the coming together of the four countries isn't quite as difficult as it's perceived from the outside? I would say 100%. I mean, just my interpretation of it, in my opinion of it, in terms of the social aspect of it and getting to know boys and us, it's the easiest thing I've ever done. It, it, I might as well have met up with my own international team. In terms of all the bonding, I think it's, it's happened really easily. And the learning, there will be little bits, but there's nothing dramatic because it's just more seeing the way boys conduct themselves, the intensity in which they train, uh, all those things just reaffirming what you do as, a, as an individual and how you know you feel actually you know what, I can compete with these boys but I also want to go on and, 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 and still improve and, and that's been the best thing really. So in amongst all the banter in the chat mm -hmm. obviously there's an element of seriousness last week I mean the mood was always positive? No, I, no I don't think so it, you know there was obviously that, that moment where I think you know, the boys played so much good rugby in that game but actually in, in hindsight and reflection when Gats came in and did the review on the Monday yeah you know, he was like, look, we lost a physical battle. We got beaten up, and that's not what this side's about. You know, you kind of put physicality and energy, etc., in the same bracket. So it was quite an intense review, but I think the guys went out and trained hard. So there was that real intensity, but as it built towards the week, it, um, it became more positive. So this win now, this weekend, they will change the whole, the whole dynamics. Now it's just about, it's about prepping for Saturday. There's no point in, in doing too much and taking something, some of the zip out of the leg. It's been a long season, it's been a long tour. And you've already had two test matches. You've had a great, um, a great win. So it's about trying to copper fasten the, the positives from that and then shore up the deficiencies. But other than that, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good basis to work from. Yeah, 100%. I, I think as well, you, as rugby players and as people, we, we, we always believe that more is better. And we always think that actually, you know, we've got to go out and train. And, and the point a lot of the time is you don't. And that, you know, as long as you've got the detail and the work, and as you said, saving the actual legs, being fresh for a test match, it's, you know, sometimes it, it, it can be a rare thing. So going in there and actually being able to do that, and no doubt there'll be tweaks in terms of some of the line-out work, some of the plays, they'll obviously throw some tweaks and changes there, or they'll go back to things they used earlier on in the tour, possibly, whatever it might be. And then we'll build into to the week. The pressure has shifted to them. 
the doubt is in their mind now. They'll be thinking, how the heck is this series still alive? Yeah, and there's a shift now in perception within the country, with the media, with you know, with the public. Just their cough has been softened slightly, and they're on the back foot, and it's not territory that they ordinarily find themselves in. Right, and a great little coffee place up here, Brian. I'm gonna pull in, I'll, uh, I'll be right. tea boy. Okay. It's one of my favourite spots in New Zealand, Loud Bay. You know me, I'll get the teas. Do you okay, what do you want? I just, uh, black Americano, please. Hask, I know what you want, brother. I'll be back in five. Perfect. Oh, he's ruffled me as well. Well, I'll be honest, but you think his chat's bad, his tea's even worse. <laughs>